What's up guys, this is Jules, and this is going to be a build for a Stam DK in a non-CP campaign. As I'm sure you know, all champion points have been removed in PvP across all servers and platforms this week, as Zoss is going to be stress testing to see if CP increases lag. And so, it is necessary to adapt to this change by changing our builds to accommodate for more sustain. For me, this meant dropping heavy armor altogether and returning to medium armor, so this is going to be a 7 out of 7 medium armor build. Returning to medium from heavy, while it does make us squishier, admittedly, does offer a lot of advantages in a non-CP campaign. Medium is going to be raising our crit by 2300. It also gives us 28% stam recovery and 21% cost reduction of skills, which is very useful. We get 12% weapon damage and 21% movement speed while sprinting, as well as 28% cost reduction of roll dodge, which is also very important. All these things are necessary in a non-CP campaign, in order to play similarly to how we're playing in CP campaigns, we do have to get these reductions in cost from somewhere, so that is why we are back in medium armor. So just getting back into the stats, guys, as you can see, things look a little different than they would on a CP campaign. We do not have 64 points into Stam as we traditionally would. Instead, we have 24 points into Health and 40 into Stam. We are putting some points into Health because we are losing 4% Health from Undaunted as we are in all medium, and we're losing 10% Health that we would be getting from the Juggernaut passive if we were in heavy. This puts our max stats at 8k max magicka, 22k max health, and 31k max stam. We have 1068 magicka recovery and 1653 stam recovery. Unbuffed, we have 2624 weapon damage and 22.4% crit. So just to buff up this weapon damage, this gives us 3194 weapon damage or just under 3200 buffed. Moving on to a couple other things about the build. We are running the Serpent Mundus. This gives us 198 Stam Recovery. We are a Vampire. This gives us Regen as well, and also the Undeath Passive, which is very good. And finally, we are running Max Health and Magicka Regen Drink. Magicka Regen Drink. I know this sounds odd, but it definitely works. It's an idea that's inspired by my friend Faso, who is a new ESO streamer and YouTuber. I'm going to be linking his channels below so you can check him out. He is a fantastic player and streamer, so please do me a favor and give him a follow. So we're going to be explaining in just a little bit why we're running that drink, but first let's get into sets. The sets that we are wearing with this build are 5 Bone Pirate, 5 Hulking Draugr, and Maelstrom Two-Hander, and Maelstrom Bow. Bone Pirate is a set that drops at a Blackheart Haven, and it's going to be giving us 2 bonuses of max stam and 1 of stam recovery. The 5 piece gives us 1930 max stam and 289 stam recovery when we have a drink buff active. I tried a lot of different drinks with this set in order to get the 5 piece bonus, However, what I found was that very few of the consumables actually count as drinks to this set. I originally tried max health and stam regen, of course, but that does not give us the five piece bonus because it's considered to be food. I also tried stam and mag recovery drinks, but this left my health way too low to be viable for Cyrodiil without putting nearly every attribute point into health. I learned from Faso that the max health and magic regen food does give the five piece bonus. He is currently running it on his stamplar. I figured that trying this couldn't hurt on a stam DK. Magicka regen is almost more important on a Stam DK than it is on a Stamplar, seeing as though high mag regen gives us more igneous shield and thus more Stam. However, the one issue with running Bone Pirate I found was that I'd be running a drink that would give me neither max Stam or Stam regen directly. The way that we satisfied this lack of max Stam is to simply run Hulking Draugr, a set that gives nothing but max Stam. This set drops out of Dire Frost Keep, in case you didn't know. It also synergizes very well with Stam DK and the Helping Hands passive that gives us 5% Stam back. The larger our max stam pool is, the more we get back with that passive. So this set is great for DK not only for igneous and a larger stam pool, but because it also indirectly increases our damage and our heals as well. So here we have 2 well fitted and 5 impen. This is going to be mostly due to play style. If you want to go all impen, you absolutely can. If you want to go more well fitted, you can do that as well. My jewelry is going to be all robust, all with weapon damage and chance and all of my gear is enchanted with max stam. However you set up this gear to get the 5 and 5 is fine, it doesn't have to be in this order. Here I have the 2 Bone Pirates rings, and 3 on the body, and I have a Hulking Draugr neck, and 4 on the body, to complete the 5 and 5. Finally, the weapons that we're running are a Sharpened Maelstrom Greatsword, and a Defending Maelstrom Bow. I'm running Double Dot Poisons on both bars. This is going to suppress the Endless Hail buff over here, and the crit charge dot over here, but will allow us to keep the max weapon damage on both of these weapons. And that is pretty much all of the gear, guys. Now we can move into skills. For skills, I'm running pretty much the same thing that I would in a CP campaign. 
We have noxious breath. This is a dot and major fracture. Rally, this is our major brutality as well as our hot and burst heal. Then we have dizzying swing, our CC and main damage. Crit rush, this is our gap closer. And reverse slice, this is our execute. Finally, we're running Dawnbreaker Smiting from the Fighter's Guild tree. I like this for the CC, the high initial damage, and the secondary dot damage is also very good. If you prefer, you can run Leap here, but I tend to like Dawnbreaker more. For off bar, we're running Resolving Vigor, our hot. Shuffle, this is going to be our major evasion, as well as our immunity to snares and immobilizations. Because we are in 7 medium armor, you will see that this skill will give you a great deal more immunity time than it would in a traditional 5 heavy to medium build. It's going to be giving us a total of 3.5 seconds of immunity in comparison to the 1 second that you get in a heavy armor build. It's important to remember not to spam this skill and instead to use it on cooldown. Remember that you don't have the Unchained passive from CP, so you'll not be able to reduce the cost of this skill. Next we have Trap Beast. This gives us minor force as well as an immobilize for enemies. Igneous Shield. This gives us major mending and gives us 5% stand back. Because we have such high magic regen, this skill is going to be used pretty frequently to contribute to stam sustain. Remember to use this skill before healing so you can get a 25% increase on heals. Finally, we have Volatile Armor. This gives us major resolve and major ward to increase our resistances, and it also can be used as an AoE to detect nightblades that are in cloak. For the ultimate on this bar, we're running Corrosive Armor. This caps our incoming damage to 3% of our max health, or 663. This ultimate also allows our attacks to ignore all physical resist and allows you to go offensive with a good amount of damage output. For alternative skills in this bar, you could replace Trap Beast with Dragon Fire scales if you feel like you'd like a Reflect. Your magic regen should be pretty high, so you should be able to run this skill. Another option would be Draining Shot from the bow bar. This is going to be a CC and also a pretty decent heal. And so those are all of the skills, guys. And because this is designed for a non-CP campaign, we have no CP layout. That is essentially the entire build. I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope that you enjoy no CP week. I know I will. It's certainly a different play style, but it lends itself nicely to a much more balanced serial than the one that we are used to. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them below or contact me on Twitter or Twitch. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.